In today's video we're going to talk about offline controllers um, and specifically about the, the Android phone stroke tablet controller and how we can implement that and use it on our uh, CNC machine. So typically CNC machines tend to come with this type of offline controller. Um, they're okay, works well. Um, and it runs the files. It has quite a few drawbacks though. Uh, you can't do certain things with this, um, like for example you can't use a probe unless you write a special file that put you, you can put on the SD card uh, that will run a probe. Um, zeroing the axis is also very difficult. It usually zeroes where you start your print from um, and unless you program a Z-lift uh, as the first move then um, you could end up scoring your um, Bit across the top of your material. Uh, if that doesn't matter too much, then I guess it's fine. Um, but it, you know, it's useful. But it's it has its drawbacks. So what I want to talk about today is is getting it onto a, either an Android phone or an Android tablet. Um, and as long as it's running KitKat 4.4 or higher uh, on Android, then you should have no issues with it. What you will need is we're going to connect via USB, exactly the same as if you plugged your PC. Uh, into the uh, controller or, or the CNC. Um, to do that we're just going to use one of these um, little USB uh, OTG ports or on-the-go ports. So this is a USB-C one which you can plug into this phone uh, and it has a USB-A on the other side. Another type of these is this one. Um, it's, yeah, it's the same kind of thing. It's a USB-A uh, which we can plug in and this one's got the micro USB uh, on it as well, so we can plug that into a micro USB port, or you can even go, you know, all out and um, get a much bigger version. It's exactly the same principle. Uh, this one's USB C as well, uh, but this one um, crucially has two USB ports, and um, it also has a USB C power port as well as HDMI. So we could actually plug a screen into this if we wanted to, but <laughs> we won't. Um, so yeah, the the the, the key advantage with this. One is that we've got the power port here, which will actually keep the phone charged whilst we're doing it. The on, only the USB-C versions will can actually power and charge the phone. You can get this block type of block for for micro USB phone connections, and they do have power connection, but the power connection only powers the peripherals. It won't charge um, the device itself. Uh, we'll use this one for for today's um, video. Okay, so let's get into it. Set this, the set this up. So we're going to move this one out of the way, um, and we'll concentrate here. So we're just going to go to the Play Store, and we're going to search for um, Gerbil, uh, and that's as far as we need to go. You can see at the top already we have our one, and we're just going to hit Install on there. I've already got it installed, so uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to jump straight to the um, to the actual um, controller on here. So. Uh, Gerbil controller. This is actually the paid for version, so you can see it's controller plus on here. But they work exactly the same, with the exception of the paid for version it does have a couple of extra features, um, and it looks slightly different as well. In that um, this is uh, grey, uh, effectively, whereas the uh, free one has got a white background. But other than that, they look and work exactly the same um, on there and even the custom buttons are the same. So the first thing when you come in, you'll see mine's actually set up already for USB, um, but uh, when you first download it, you'll see that this is set for Bluetooth uh, on here. Um, and you can connect via Bluetooth, but uh, as I say, we're gonna concentrate on USB today, uh, as it's a simpler uh, way to connect um, in there. So to get that changed over, we're just gonna go into our settings in here, um, and on here we'll um, look at our application settings and then we can change the default connection here um, from Bluetooth or to USB and we want USB on, on the go port uh, on here so I'll cancel it because I've already got that one set uh, our board rate should be set okay but 115 200 is, is, is absolutely fine on there um, and then one other thing that we'll do is we'll actually just uh, click stay awake and this allows the screen to stay on whilst we're running a job so we can see um, how far through etc we are and if we need to hit the stop button or the pause button or anything immediately then the screen's already awake for us to do that. Okay and um, we're in dark mode but uh, 
again. Let's go back. Okay, so the general system is okay. We've got this um, USB set up, so that's great. You can see these are kind of shaded out at the moment because we're not connected uh, to the to the machine. When we connect up, these will go all um, nice bright white buttons, uh, graphics on the buttons. What we can also do before we go down to the uh, the CNC is we can uh, we can set this bottom row of custom buttons. Now these aren't showing uh, when you first download the software. You'll see that these four buttons are missing, but we can go and set those in our settings menu. So we go back again to our settings menu and inside here we've got jogging preferences. Um, in the jogging preferences you can set um, quick step sizes for X, Y and for Z. We'll see that later on the on the CNC how we use those. But at the bottom here we have custom buttons. So if we tick this we can then enable those custom buttons here. And then the custom buttons actually allow two functions for each button. So a short press and a long press. So we're just going to use button one for now. Um, I've already set this up already, so we're just going to tell it to do a G90, GO, X0 and Y0. So G90 just gives us um, our, um, in, it just sets the units into um, absolute, not incremental. Um, and uh, G0 is rapid movement. So we just want to tell it to go to X0 and Y0 once we've set those up. And then if I press it for a long press, we get this exactly the same, but then straight after it, we also send Z to zero. So after we've done a probing, for example, we can send it to zero, 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 um, and we'll actually see that we're in the right place, ready to start. So just quick buttons there. And again, labels, I've just called them X, Y, Z on here. Great. Um, and that's it. Now we can go over to the... Um, CNC and we can plug in and we can see how it all works with the machine. Okay over at the CNC then so we'll use my uh, 3018 Pro as the machine for this video um, and the first thing we need to do obviously now is to plug in our controller so on my phone I'm just going to start um, the uh, Gerbil controller software up as we saw earlier and then I'm just going to plug all of this in so I'm using a slightly bigger OTG port, this one just has power um, because of the USB-C adapter that I have here. Um, so we're just going to plug in our USB, lead into our OTG adapter and then simply plug this into the phone and you can see charging. We need to give it access just to allow it to use the controller, so yes. And you should now see all the buttons have gone white, so that's great, we're in we're connected. I'm just going to turn it, the board on itself so that the spindle is now active. So yeah, so the first thing we can we, we need to do really is to look at how far we're going to move each time we press any of these buttons and this can be set on this line here um, on the on the screen so if we hit this you have some sliders where you can move them around for X and Y and the same for Z um, underneath here um, we also have some presets on here, so you can uh, hit the presets um, and this will change the step values to whatever these presets are done. These presets can actually be adjusted uh, in the jogging preferences menu um, in the settings. But uh, for now I'm just going to set it on 20, move this over and then we can use these buttons um, to move our spindle around wherever we need it. If your machine's capable of auto homing, you've also got the homing button. Uh, this machine isn't, so I'm not going to use that one just yet. Okay, so we also have some other buttons here at the bottom of the screen. Um, I shall bring this a little bit closer now and you can see, um, just refocus. Okay, there we go. So uh, we have some buttons at the bottom. So these are uh, X, um, Y and Z zeroing buttons, so we can zero at any point the uh, axis that we that we want. Um, the G54, 55, 56, 57 buttons are the work coordinate system. We can select which one we're using. Um, and of course, these this bottom row here is the custom buttons that I set up earlier. This is the custom button that we showed in the setup, the X, Y, and Z 
button. We'll use that shortly and uh, show how that works in, in, a, in a little bit. Um, just to go through these, the, the, this system, if we um, scroll to the second slide, you'll notice the top coordinate system part stays um, with every screen. The second screen is where we uh, can load our files in uh, and uh, play and stop etc for um, all our g-code files so we can hit this button and we can choose any of our g-code files in here um, and then that will be loaded in ready to play from our zero position okay so the third screen is our probe screen it also has a tool length offset uh, adjust as well if you wanted to I don't use that particular function but um, uh, I do use the probe function. Here you can set the feed rate. Um, I've set it at 70 millimeters per minute, uh, which is quite slow. Um, plate thickness is uh, 1.55. As you can see, when I use my probe, um, it's quite small, um, and uh, it's just an old piece of PCB, which I've uh, um, cut into a into a small probe. And then the distance to probe is kind of the maximum distance that um, the head will move before it throws an error um, when it's trying to look for the probe. Uh, and then the final screen is the, is the sort of terminal window here. Um, and the, the, you can send or, or um, receive information from the machine manually here. Um, and there's, the paid for version actually has these extra four buttons across here. So, um, you can actually find out all your machine settings on here, the um, G-code parameters, your parser settings, and the build information of the of the um, Gerbil system that we're using. So yeah, so um, good lot of uh, use for this. Um, we're going to go back now and use the uh, use our jog settings on the jog pad and zeroing settings now to set the zero position for our for our workpiece. Um, which is already in. Um, I've got it clamped down and I've already got my 1.8mm uh, bit ready to go um, on here. So yeah, so we'll uh, we'll get this get this going. Um, we'll refocus on the machine and we'll bring this um, over to the zero position which I've already marked. So I'm just going to bring it close by um, and then I'm just going to change to one of my other presets, one mil steps, uh, and then we can just go a little bit more accurate on there. Um, maybe, yeah. and, and we can also go to a very small point one. Um, we can just bring this to roughly the right place. I'm just going to bring the Z down a little bit. Just to confirm, yeah, so I'm happy with that. So now I'm happy with that, I can uh, use the zeroing buttons here to just zero in on the X and Y. And you notice at the top now, um, the zero uh, buttons on here have uh, come in. So I'm gonna just gonna bring that in closer so it's uh, easier to see. There we go. So you can see now the work position settings are at zero uh, for X and Y. Uh, for Z we're now going to move, going to use the probe uh, function. Okay so we're going to set the probe position now. So we're going to um, move over to our um, probing um, window on here. Um, there we go, we refocused. So all I'm going to do here is allow um, the uh, system to auto adjust the Z axis just by turning this on, put the probe in place and simply hit the probe button. So we'll give that a whirl. I'm just going to move the, the head um, back over the workpiece a little bit just to give me a bit more room so that's fine. Back to the probing menu so we're going to put the probe in. Here's my little PCB <laughs> and we're just going to hit the probe button and yes. And there we go, we've now got our Z position also set on the machine. Um, 
And now what we can do is uh, we can use this to go back to use our long press of the custom button to return everything back to zero. We can check it's all in the right place. So we're just going to confirm send on there and um, the system is is now in zero. Uh, zero position is okay and height is perfect too. So before I start the print job I'm just going to move the z-axis up um, slightly just to make sure that it's clear of the workpiece. Um, so now you can see um, we have uh, zero zero and we're at three mil above the workpiece. So that's perfect, we're ready to go now. So I'm going to go to our second screen, I'm going to load in our job for today which is this one here and uh, all I have to do now is press OK and accept Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, the video today. If you did, please hit like and subscribe at the bottom. It's important to us. Uh, and again, thanks for watching. Yeah.